Hi friends, um, hope you all are keeping well. Uh, the purpose of my uh, doing this video and streaming online uh, is because uh, next week as church, we are going to have a week of fasting and prayer, a week of fasting and prayer. And so it is important to know uh, why do we need to fast, how we need to fast, what are the importance of fasting, and also, what does the Bible says about fasting? We hear about uh, different days, you know, 21 days, 3 days, 1 days, 40 days of fasting. So what, what does that all mean? And that's my purpose today to share with you the importance of fasting. If you read the Gospels, Jesus, he said, when you fast, you know, so he never said, you know, if you fast, but he always said, when you fast. So in other words, it was not an option, but Jesus was encouraging his disciples uh, to fast. And that's why he said, uh, when you fast, and he did not say, if you fast. So here we go. We know that it is so vital, it is so important um, that time and again uh, we, you know, should fast. Uh, I understand that many times, uh, you know, there are people who, have, for medical reasons, they cannot fast or abstain from food. Um, and that's understandable. But you can fast, you know, in different ways. Um, maybe you can just do a vegetarian fast or skip all the meat or maybe you can do what I call it Daniel's fast and then you can you know just maybe skip the breakfast or skip lunch and have breakfast and dinner uh, or maybe skip the dinner or maybe uh, you can abstain from certain things that you are so attached to um, you know where you abstain from those things basically the purpose of fasting is to seek God you know where you say no to your fleshly desires saying no to that you crave for so much and you say yes to God and uh, you know God is pleased with that and one thing I know fasting does change your life there is power in fasting uh, it is very effective uh, when we fast you know there are five things we must ask before we fast as you can see on the screen the first one is uh, is it god led or god ordained are you fasting because god has led you into it or are you fasting because you want to lose weight you know, many times I come across people where um, they say they're fasting because they want to lose weight. Uh, biblically, uh, that's not the real purpose you should be fasting for. Uh, yeah, you can do all those dieting to lose weight. But when it comes to fasting, you know, you need to seek God, ask God, and God has to lead you into that. And second purpose, what are your motives? Why are you fasting? Uh, later we will see the different reasons why people fasted in the Bible, you know, and we'll go through that. So we should know the motives of why we are fasting. For example, as for church, New Life Church, uh, next week when we are fasting, we are fasting for different reasons. You know, first is for the church. We are fasting that God will lead us, guide us. Uh, into you know next phase of our uh, church life and what God would like to do in and through us uh, praise God for all the things that God is doing amongst us but let us not be satisfied with where we are let us be more hungry for God let us you know ask God for more and to do things more and we are fasting also for our community around us you know the day and age that we are living in is not easy it's tough it's going to be tougher and um, and as church we need the wisdom we need 
God's Spirit to help us uh, to that how as church we can benefit others, how ch as church we can be that light and salt to the world, how we can reach out to the people and also in the community we are praying that God will bring people into his kingdom. There will be salvation of people, people will be delivered, people will be healed, signs, wonders, miracles will follow and we need God's help, we need God to do it and we need the wisdom of God to lead us and guide us uh, into it. And that's why we are fasting. And also we are fasting because uh, as a nation, uh, you know, next week our new prime minister is going to be announced. And it is so important as church, we need to pray towards it, Lord, that you bring the right one, right person who will reign and rule this nation, who will guide this nation, you know, into the future. And, uh, you know, it is so important. I always say this, you know, one thing we should remember, the government doesn't have the answer for the nation. It is the church that has the answer for the nation. When we, as believers, come on our knees and pray to God, God moves, God do things, you know, and when God moves, you know, amazing things happen. Amen. So, yeah, we need to know our motives, why we are fasting. And I just laid out to you, uh, you know, the reason that we are fasting next week. And then the third thing is, what specific needs are you fasting for? In scripture, whenever the people fasted, there was a need. And uh, as I said, I will we'll look into it as we go further into this study. The fourth reason what results are you looking for every fast has a result as i said earlier fasting i believe is powerful when you do f fasting it first of all it changes you you know it brings you closer to god it changes you it transforms you and we also see the results of fasting the reason that we are praying for amen god moves you know, when we pray and also especially when we fast. So let's look into it. First, are you determined to minister to the Lord while fasting? That is the key. Okay. If you are fasting and if you're not praying or spending some time in prayer seeking God, uh, I don't think there's any point of fasting. You know, the first thing you should know that when you're fasting, you need to seek God. You need to minister to God. In book of Acts chapter 13 verse 2 says, you know, when they were selecting people, uh, appointing people to do various things uh, within the church to help uh, in the distribution and other activities. It says, as they ministered to the Lord, you know, see the scripture here. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. So they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Then in Zechariah, Zechariah chapter 7, verse 5 to 6, uh, it says, When you held fasting uh, days of fasting every fifth and seventh month, all these 70 years, were you doing it for me? And when you held feasts, was that for me hardly you're interested in religion i'm interested in people so god was saying you know that when you were fasting were you doing it for me were you seeking me were you coming to me in prayer and worship and then we see there are different kinds of fasting uh, the bible uh, mentions and uh, there's three days of fasting, which was a uh, fasting which was done for crisis. We read in book of Esther chapter 4 verse 16. As you know the story, uh, you know, uh, the king had given the decree that all the Jews should be killed uh, in his kingdom. And uh, Esther, who was the queen, uh, you know, she wants to go into the presence of the king while she was not designated at that time to go 
um, but she wanted to take that risk and approach the king and to you know change that decree that the Jews should not be killed. It was a, a risky step that uh, Esther was taking. And that's what she said, you know, that go and gather together all the Jews of Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will do the same. And then, though it is against the law, I will go in to see the king. If I must die, I must die. <coughs> so we see here that Esther, she pronounces fast uh, among all the Jewish community and she herself and her maid servants, all, they all fast for three days, day and night. They do not eat or drink, you know, and as a result, God does wonders. The decree is changed. The enemy is destroyed. You know, so you see here the powerful result of this three days of fasting. Then again, we read in book of Daniel. Uh, it speaks about 21 day of partial fast for revelation. So uh, Daniel, he was doing this partial fast. He, as it says, he ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in his mouth. You know, and um, so it says he fasted for three full weeks, that is 21 days, and he did not eat uh, pleasant bread or flesh and wine, you know. And then in Daniel chapter 9 verse 3, and, and I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloths and ashes. So Daniel gave a lot of importance to fasting and as a result he sees that the angel of God comes to him and brings the revelation to him. And we see here again a powerful example when Daniel he fasts for 21 days. Then there is another fast uh, of one day where people fasted for consecration and re-examination and this was God who told them to do this in Levit Leviticus chapter 23 verse 27 to 29 God said to Moses the tenth day of the seventh month in the day of atonement hold a sacred assembly fast and offer a fire gift to God don't work on that day because it is a day of atonement to make atonement for you before you, your God. Anyone who doesn't fast on that day must be cut off from his people. So God said to Moses, he asked them to fast, you know, hold a one day fast, uh, basically to consecrate themselves, you know, to re-examine re -exam, uh, examine themselves. And I believe it is uh, a good thing uh, as believers time and again, where, you know, like, like I do, for example, once in a week, uh, one day in a week, I fast, me and my wife, we fast and we pray. And, uh, you know, it is a good habit and uh, it really helps you spiritually to be more closer to God, to consecrate yourself and also to examine yourself where you are spiritually, what's going on in your life, to come before God and Spirit searches all things, He shows you all things and the best way to do, uh, you know, I recommend uh, even as the scripture says, you know, to fast for a day. So there is that one day of fasting which was done for consecration and re-examination. And there was, again, one day fast for providence and deliverance. You know, Ezra, book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 23. It says, you know, Ezra was building the temple of God. And it was not easy. There was a lot of opposition that was coming against him and his people while they were building the temple of God. So it says, so we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us and he heard our prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So it says, so we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God 
would take care of us and he heard our prayer. Prayer, fasting always goes with prayer. And here we see that they not only fasted, but they also prayed and prayed earnestly. And God took care of them and heard their prayer. You know, if you are going through some kind of crisis in your life, if you are praying for a breakthrough in your life, you know, if you're maybe on the crossroads of your life and don't know what to do, where to go, you know, I would encourage you, fast and pray, you know, and earnestly pray. I'm telling you, God is a God who answers prayer. You know, God says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you. You know, what a powerful and wonderful God we have that we can run to him. We can, you know, call unto him whenever we face any kind of crisis, you know, and here, uh, Ezra, he fasted, you know, and uh, so they, with his people, they fasted and prayed. And it says, God, that our God would take care of us. And he heard our prayer. You know, he heard our prayer. That is the God we serve. So that is the one day fasting for providence and for deliverance. And let me tell you, read this passage of scripture. It is so interesting, so powerful. Okay, now the background of this story here is that, you know, the children of Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin had done something awful, something wrong. And, um, you know, to cut the story short, uh, the rest of the tribe of Israel decided to go against Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, and fight against them. You know, so they decide to do that. So here we go, um, you know, as you can read the scripture, then the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God to inquire of God. They said, which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? You know, so they are asking God, Lord, uh, here we are, the 11 tribes of Israel, which of us should go and fight against Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah first. Okay, so the Lord said, remember this, the Lord said, Judah first. So they are inquiring of God. Okay, it's not that they just decided one day, you know, okay, let's go tomorrow to fight against the, against Benjamin. And uh, we don't need to inquire of God. They inquired of God and God said, Judah first. But the result was not pleasant. Verse 19 says, So the children of Israel rose in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in battle array to fight against them at Gibeah. Then the children of Benjamin came out of Gibeah and on that day cut down to the ground 22,000 men of the Israelites. You know, can you imagine this? 22,000 men of the Israelites were killed. What wrong they had done? They had asked the Lord, they had inquired of the Lord, and God said to them, when they asked God, who, shall, who, who should go first? And God said, Judah first. So they were just obeying God. They were doing the right thing by inquiring of God, but they got defeated. 22,000 men of the Israelites were killed that day. Verse 22 says, And the people, that is the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and again formed the battle line at the place where they had put themselves in array on the first day. Then the children of Israel went up and wept before the Lord. Now you see here, they wept before the Lord until evening and asked counsel of the Lord saying, Shall I again draw near for battle against the children of my brother Benjamin? And Lord said, Go up against him. So again, God is giving them 
they are asking God, they are inquiring of God, they are praying to God and God is saying, yeah, go, go and fight. But what happens? Verse 24, so the children of Israel approached the children of Benjamin on the second day and Benjamin went out against them from Gibeah on the second day and cut down to the ground 18,000 more of the children of Israel. All these drew to the sword. Wow. Second time they failed. Second time they got battered and killed. 18,000. 18,000 men of children of Israel were killed. What wrong they had done? They had inquired of the Lord. God said, them, said to them, go and fight. But they got defeated. Let us read verse 26. This is where it gets interesting. It says, Then all the children of Israel, that is all the people, went up and came to the house of God and wept. Again they cried out to God and wept. But here we go. It was not just they cried out unto God and wept, but it says they sat before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. Again I'll say this. They sat before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. And they offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Verse 27. So the children of Israel inquired of the Lord. The Ark of the Covenant was there in those days. And Phinehas the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, stood before it in those days, saying, Shall I yet go out again, go out to battle against the children of my brother Benjamin, or shall I cease? Now hear what God is saying. First, two times they inquired of God. What did God say? First time they asked, who, shall we, who should go first? God said, Judah first. Second time they asked, should we go against the children of Benjamin? And God said, yes, go against them. But remember, God did not say to them whether they are going to win the battle or not whether God is going to deliver them or not. God simply said, yes, go out to fight against them. Now here, verse 35. The Lord defeated Benjamin before Israel. Wow. And the children of Israel destroyed that day 25,100 Benjamites. All this drew the sword. And the Lord said, go up for tomorrow, I will deliver them into your hand. I will deliver them into your hand. First two times God did not say to them, he will deliver them into their hand. Third time he said, I will deliver them into your hand. And that's what happened. They defeated the children of Benjamin. They fought and they won the battle. What changed? What changed? First two times they prayed, they asked, but they got defeated. But third time, the scripture says in verse 26, they were sat before the Lord and fasted that day until evening. They fasted. They fasted, they prayed, they offered sacrifices, and God gave them the victory. The reason I'm sharing this story to you is this. There is power when we fast and we pray. There is power when we fast and we pray and we will see the results. In 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 27 to 29, so it was when Ahab heard those words that he tore his clothes, clothes and put sackcloth on his body and fasted and lay in sackcloth and, sackcloth and went about mourning. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, See how Ahab has humbled himself 
before me because he has humbled himself before me i will not bring the calamity in his days i will not bring the calamity in his days so he fasted and he prayed and he you know bible always connects with fasting as humbling before god and as we know as we humble before the lord the scripture says he will lift you up and psalm 35 was 13 again it says i humbled myself with fasting you know so when you are fasting you are humbling before god you know because many times it happens we can have those pride and ego in our life and sometimes even we don't realize we have this ego and pride and if someone say something do something you know it hurts our ego hurts our pride and sometimes we can take glory to ourselves for what we have achieved in life and what we have done you know and we forget that it is god who has worked in us it is god who has blessed us it is god who has done the miracles you know and we forget all those things and pride comes that's what happened to satan who was lucifer pride came into his heart and he was thrown out from the presence of god and pride is a dangerous thing pride is one of the awful sin a person can have and that's why it is so so important to humble ourselves you know before god and the scripture says i humbled myself with fasting because when you fast you know you you come before god and you know you consecrate and you examine yourself and god shows you the areas which are not right uh before him so amen so humble yourself we humble ourselves with fasting then again isaiah speaks about you know when we fast you know he lists all we need to do good things you know we need to help people we need to set free and not oppress people and he goes on feed the hungry and and that's the kind of fasting you know god is pleased uh, so the list goes on with that so coming back uh, to you know the Uh, i'll go back to the first slide and uh, you know fasting and prayer it will change your life it will change your life oh i forgot one more thing you know bible also speaks i spoke about daniel's fast esther who fasted then the uh, you know people of uh, children of israel fasted uh, when they were fought against the uh, uh, children of benjamin and ezra fasted and i mentioned to you different fast um you know jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights um and we see in book of acts they you know regularly fasted and god did wonders to them okay and then also the bible speaks about uh, ezekiel in ezekiel chapter 4 uh, where god asks Ezekiel to fast it is like a partial fast but that fast was to bring a message to the people of Israel you know where he asked um, Ezekiel for 390 days just to fast with wheat barley lentils um and you know and then he gives him the measurement also 12 shekels in today's days uh, it is 280 grams of those that food he should be eating every day so god asked him to do that for 390 days to bring the message to the people of israel so there are other various fasts that bible speaks about but the most important thing which i want to share to you is this you know there is power when we do the fasting and fasting always goes with prayer okay so uh, next week we are going to have this uh, time of fasting and prayer as church which we want to keep like a regular thing uh, maybe once in a year or twice in a year um, you know to pray i will encourage you if you are able to fast um, you know please do it um, and we are going to have from monday to friday every evening 
7.30 p.m. in the church. We are going to come together. We'll worship God and we'll pray, you know, for different things, different needs. Uh, so I would encourage church, if every one of you can come there, the more the better, more the powerful. So I'll encourage you, whatever you're doing, cancel your appointments, uh, you know, be there, make an effort. You know, I'm telling you many times when we do that, you know, fasting and prayer and we have the evil one will always try to keep you away from these events, you know, from doing it and to pray. But you are more than conquerors and overcomers, okay? Don't give any foothold to the evil one. Come, let's pray together, uh, you know, and we will see great things happening because there is power in fasting and prayer. So I hope uh, this short teaching has helped you. So may the good Lord bless you. If you need more information on this, please do contact me. Uh, I'll be happy to, uh, you know, talk to you. So God bless you and take care. And I hope to see you next week for the prayer and fasting. God bless. Amen.